Today we have a very special matchup in our Who Would Win series. Two legendary snipers from different wars, both bringing their lethal skills to a modern battlefield. In one corner is the legendary Simo Haya, nicknamed the White Death by the Russians he killed by the dozens. Responding to his country's call to arms after an invasion by the Soviet Union in the 1930s, Simo Haya proved himself to be one of the deadliest men to ever wield a firearm earning an estimated 259 confirmed kills. In the other corner, we have the United States' own Carlos Hathcock, a legend in his own right, with 93 confirmed kills and dozens more unconfirmed. His body count may be lower, but Hathcock is famous for undertaking some of the most dangerous and impossible missions ever asked of any sniper. Hathcock would too earn his nickname from his enemies, called the White Feather for his signature feather he wore on his bush hat, something he wore on purpose in order to, in his own words, level the playing field for the men attempting to kill him. Today the two lethal marksmen will be facing off in our special battle arena as we find out who would win in a fight to the death, the White Death or the White Feather. In 1939, there was one thing the Soviet Union feared more than anything else, an invasion by modern and rearmed Germany. After suffering greatly at the hands of Germany in the last world war and then France during the Napoleonic Wars before that, the Soviet Union was determined that it would avoid at all costs another invasion of its territory. Fearing that war with Germany was inevitable, the Soviet Union believed it would be best to establish defensive positions far ahead of important industrial centers such as Leningrad, and thus demanded that Finland see 19 miles along parts of its border with the Soviet Union so that an increased buffer zone in the case of an invasion could be created. The Soviets also demanded the seeding of several islands and permission to establish a military base on the Hanko Peninsula to be operated for 30 years. In exchange, the Soviet Union would cede the municipalities of Repola and Koryarvi, an area roughly twice the size of that demanded by the Soviets. The offer was taken up by the Finnish parliament, and the public voiced its opposition to the demands. Thus, the Soviet secret police staged a false flag operation against one of their own border posts, shelling it with artillery fire and killing four guards while injuring nine other men. This provided the Soviets with reason to declare war, and soon what would become known as the Winter War of 1939-1940 to began. Haya was quickly enlisted into the military and deployed to the front lines, where he showed an incredible aptitude for marksmanship. Having grown up hunting wild game all his life, Haya was a crack shot, and though he was offered a more modern rifle upon enlisting, he refused and went to war with his old but trusty Mosin Nagon M91. Haya would also refuse the use of telescopic sights, having grown up his whole life shooting just using the rifle's iron sights. The fact that many of his kills were from hundreds of meters away only makes this use of his iron sights even more incredible. However, a far more practical factor figured into his use of iron sights only, and that is the many Finnish and Soviet snipers he saw betrayed by the glinting of sunlight from the glass of a rifle's scope. Haiha very quickly made a name for himself as a crack shot, and soon his superiors were dispatching him to eliminate high-value targets. Though he often worked alone, he also worked in cooperation with the spotter, and the two men would lie perfectly still in the snow for hours, waiting for an opportune time to strike. In order to not give his position away with his warm breath in the frigid winter air, Haiha would take a mouthful of snow so that it chilled his exhaled breath. So that the blast of his rifle wouldn't blow snow around and give him away, Haya patiently built up banks of snow around himself and froze the snow in front of him with water to turn it icy and hard. Haya would stock the killing fields of Finland's eastern border for the duration of the war, once even weathering a Soviet artillery barrage called down in his position just to eliminate him alone. With the temperatures hovering around freezing, Haya was forced to endure the worst of the elements and would have to trudge miles through thick snow to find his way back to friendly lines after each successful mission. In the end, an enemy sniper scored a lucky shot on Haya with an explosive bullet, severely injuring him and forcing him to spend the rest of the short war recuperating in a field hospital. Though Finland eventually lost the Winter War, Haiha had done more than his share in defense of his homeland, and earned enough confirmed kills to give him the highest body count of any sniper in history. When Finland joined with Germany in its invasion of the Soviet Union in order to retake its lost territory, Haiha refused to rejoin the military, claiming that he had no interest in invading another man's land. Decades later, Carlos Hathcock would find himself waging his own one-man war. With the collapse of the French forces in Vietnam, the United States took up the fight against communism and soon committed combat troops while still trying to leave the war mostly in the hands of a struggling South Vietnam. Before his involvement in Vietnam, though, Hathcock had grown up in Arkansas, where he would hunt with an old single-shot 22 in order to help feed his poor family. 
Hathcock had grown up hearing stories about the exploits of American Marines in the Pacific during World War II, and as soon as he was 17 years old, he enlisted in the US Marine Corps. In the years before shipping off to Vietnam, Hathcock made a name for himself by winning several shooting championships, both in the civilian world and between the military branches, even winning the prestigious Wimbledon Cup. In 1966, Hathcock was deployed to Vietnam as a military policeman, but he quickly grew unsatisfied with the job and itched to be sent ahead into combat. He would get his wish when a Corps-wide initiative tried to add at least one sniper to every infantry platoon, and Hathcock was singled out for training as a sniper due to his many awards for marksmanship. It wouldn't be long before Hathcock would be out in the field, hunting enemy snipers and taking out high-priority enemy VIPs. On one of his most legendary missions, and the most difficult any sniper in history may have ever undertaken, Hathcock volunteered for an assignment that was so secret the group of marine snipers originally approached to undertake it were simply told it would be an extremely dangerous mission with very low probability of survival. By now Hathcock had become a sniper instructor, and he volunteered for the mission, stating later that because he was the best sniper the US had, it might as well be him that took the job. The mission would see Hathcock travel alone for days toward an enemy field encampment, and once there, he would crawl for almost three days, moving just inches an hour, while avoiding enemy patrols all so he could kill one North Vietnamese general. The Viet Cong and the NVA soon named him Long Trang, or White Feathered Sniper, for the distinctive white feather he always wore in his cap, so that, as he figured, it would level the playing field for any man hunting him in return. A $30,000 bounty was placed on his head and no enemy sniper would live to claim it, though many attempted. One such sniper, known only as Cobra, hunted Hathcock down and the two dueled in the thick jungle for an entire day, each silently trying to locate and kill the other. In the end, as the sun was fading, a single quick glint of light tipped Hathcock off to the Cobra's location, and he fired, putting a bullet clean through the scope of the Cobra's rifle, without even grazing the sides and killing him instantly. The White Death versus the White Feather, two of the deadliest marksmen to have ever lived. Who then would come out on top in a sniper-on-sniper -sniper duel? Hi-Hat's kill count has made him the deadliest sniper of all time, but in truth the nature of the two different wars led directly to hi hats incredible high kill count. In the Winter War, Finnish troops faced off against massed Soviet formations, with over 1.5 million Soviet forces advancing across a very narrow strip of land on Finland's eastern border. hi hat enjoyed what's best called a target-rich environment. Fighting from defensive fortifications and repelling massive assaults, hi hat had no shortage of enemy soldiers to shoot at. Another major factor contributing to hi hats high kill count is the fact that the Soviets had not issued any winter uniforms for their troops, making Soviet soldiers stand out like practice targets against the white snow. By comparison, Hathcock's war was much different in nature, and this best explains the disparity in kill counts. In Vietnam, conflicts between large groups of opposing forces were rare, and rather the bulk of the war took place at the company level, between groups of dozens or hundreds of men at a time. The nature of the terrain, thick jungles versus winter forests and frozen plains, also made Soviet-style large-scale wave attacks impossible. Though he did take part in defense of fire bases, Hathcock very often had to hunt for his prey, and tasked with the elimination of enemy VIPs, Hathcock had to be very selective about who he shot at in order to not give himself away. Therefore, kill count alone is not going to determine who is a superior sniper, though in truth both men have enough legendary exploits that in all likelihood they were evenly matched in terms of skill. Hi-Hat routinely scored kills on soldiers hundreds of yards away using nothing more than iron sights, yet Hathcock famously shot an elite enemy sniper straight through his own scope, the bullet never once even grazing the sides of the scope. How then do their weapons match up? Hi-Hat famously used an old M1891 Russian-built rifle, chambered with a 7.62 round. The rifle featured an effective firing range of over 500 meters for point targets and 800 meters for area targets, though both ranges could be improved with optical sights. It weighed about 9 pounds and had a barrel length of 29 inches. Hathcock, meanwhile, operated a Winchester Model 70, originally designed as a hunting rifle and adapted for use by military snipers. The rifle was chambered with a 30 6 round and featured maximum effective ranges very similar to hi Ha's M1891. Weighing between 6 and 8 pounds with a 26-inch barrel, it was a little lighter and more wieldy in thick brush than hi Ha's M1891, however. Weapons alone are clearly not going to dictate the winner, as the two rifles are simply too close together in specs to give one a noticeable advantage over the the other. However, Hathcock's larger 30 6 round would definitely have been deadlier than hi 7.62, but with such expert marksmen, this would likely not figure very much into the fight. 
Instead, the battle would clearly be one of battlefields. Haiha was an expert winter warrior and knew how to fight and conceal himself in winter snows. Hathcock, meanwhile, was an expert jungle fighter, routinely outstocking even native snipers who had grown up in those same jungles their whole lives. As with any duel between professional snipers, a victory would ultimately come down to who could put accurate fire on target first. And in this case, the skills of the two men are simply too close to call, so we're leaving it up to the environment. In a jungle battlefield, Hathcock would likely win this fight every time. But in a wintertime battlefield, Haiha's keen survival and camouflage skills would see him the victor. In the end, despite Haiha's kill count being artificially inflated by the nature of the war he fought and the fact that he was shooting at men wearing dark uniforms in the white snow, the two men are still too closely matched in terms of skill to dictate a winner, and we're going to go ahead and call this a draw. Who do you think would really have won between Hathcock and Haya? Who would truly be the best sniper of all time? Let us know in the comments, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.